Hi, I'm Kirstie Hume. I modeled full-time for about eight years, I think. Um, full-time, I was 18. My dad um, always wanted me to, you know, walk tall and, you know, be a lady. And so he um, wanted me to, to take a de deportment class, which, you know, is a very, I think, old-fashioned concept. So, you know, it kind of translates into a modeling class. And, um, and then, um, you know, I was on the books for this model agency in Scotland that I, you know, did this modeling class with, and I would just do, you know, jobs on the weekend periodically and it was basically pocket money. I went to Miami um, for three months and um, and then when I was there I met um, an agent from Paris who wanted me to come do shows and an agent from Milan who wanted me to come do shows and, and so I went and um, did my first season of shows and, and you know I, I did pretty well and, and you know before I knew it my career took off and I was living in New York and kind of sad because I you know really was having a lot of fun in Miami and um, you know I was all of a sudden in New York and I was like what happened what's going on where am I and you know it just was it was very sudden. <laughs> I met Patrick when I was in Paris doing my first season of shows. Um, you know, I went on a bunch of go sees um, and appointments, and um, so Patrick was one of the people I met, and he really liked me, and he started booking me pretty much straight away. And um, and he was also working with Chanel at the time, and they were looking for um, someone um, for Chanel Beauty. And so I ended up, you know, very luckily, um, you know, with a Chanel contract um, that, you know, Patrick shot most of the pictures for. And, um, you know, that was within, you know, a few months of going to Paris. So <laughs> I kind of, you know, kind of like happened backwards. You know, usually you work towards that. And, you know, I was very lucky and ended up starting with that. Well, I don't know if it was um, necessarily, you know, bohemian. I'm sure I would have liked, liked for it to have been more bohemian, but um, I was um, living at home with my dad and had always wanted to go to art school um, since I was a little girl. And so, I, you know, I worked to get my place and, and, and I literally had just gotten my place in art school when, you know, um, I had the offer to go to Miami and I thought, well, you know, maybe I'll take a year out and I'll go in a year and so that's what I did. I got on the plane, I flew to Miami and then, you know, as I explained, I um, ended up going um, to Paris and, 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 you know, things changed forevermore. And, I didn't really know what to do and you know everybody said you know just you know take the money <laughs> and so I was like okay but I was really I was really sad and um, you know kind of I was a little lost you know I, I really didn't expect um, for what happened to happen. I had a friend in Miami um, who happened to be moving to New York at the same time and so we rented an apartment together and, and um, she had a couple of good friends in New York so I initially you know kind of just hung out with her and her friends and um, and then yeah I, I met Donovan um, after maybe six months but you know, we, we didn't get together at that point. I just, you know, met him then, and it was about six months later when we started dating, so. Um, my first cover was the cover of Har Harper's Bazaar, and, um, you know, and, 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 and it was pretty special, you know. As I said, I didn't expect anything 
to really, you know, come off a modeling career and, you know, and so, you know, when that happened, it was really um, a special moment. What, what happened? Yeah, well, I mean, at that time, certainly, you know, nowadays they don't give so many covers to models anymore. A lot of them go to actresses, but um, back then there was a lot more opportunity for that. And um, yeah, it, it definitely, you know, gave you a lot of exposure and um, um, was a, you know, a, a, a great, you know, career booster. <laughs> I kind of turned a blind eye to it, you know, I'm not really very comfortable with it and so I kind of, you know, I kind of would, you know, walk down the street, you know, as though I had blinkers on and, um, you know, unless like, you know, you know, occasionally people would like come right up to you and then it was unavoidable, but, you know, I generally kind of just tried not to pay much attention to it and, you know, my husband was always like, you know, telling me, you know, he heard, overheard such and such saying, or someone saying such and such, but I just kind of blocked it out for the most part. <laughs> well, my hair is naturally very strong. Um, both my parents um, have a lot of hair and strong hair, and so it's partly genetic, I think. And um, you know, my 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 mother always took immaculate care of my hair when I was growing up. You know, she would you know you know use um, shampoo and conditioner for blonde hair, and she would like you know get every little tangle out without breaking one hair, and you know a lot of the time would let it dry naturally, <clears throat> which of course is better um, you know to, to do without the heat if you can. Um, so. I think I kept my hair, I, I lost my mom when I was 16 and so I think I, I kept my hair long for all those years um, kind of as a, a tribute to her um, and, and um, as for tips, I just, you know, I just try to be as natural as I possibly can with products. I, you know, put, very little, if anything, product-wise in my own hair in my real life, and um, you know, I, I try to use um, mostly natural shampoos and conditioners, and um, you know, just you know, as she did, let it dry naturally most of the time, um, and. Um, you know, I've done various things over the years, like putting jojoba oil um, through my hair, um, which I think it was the Native Americans that, that did that um, with jojoba oil. Um, you know, so, you know, various things like that I've, I've you know, tried over the years, but um, mostly, um, you know, I just try to be as natural as possible. I actually just started, um, uh, I just tried a natural hair color, um, which worked really well. It doesn't have any ammonia in it. Um, so that was, that was pretty cool to find. Just after, you know, years of doing shows and, you know, doing like five shows a day and having your hair pulled this way and that, um, you know, it finally got too damaged and, and it was just, it was time for a change. So, um, so I cut it all off and, and, and I have to say it was a very liberating experience. There was a story in um, American Vogue and it was Sally Hirschberger who cut it. It, it just, you know, um, had been suggested to me a couple of times and, and I, you know, wasn't ready and then I, you know, I finally got to a place where I was ready, you know, I, 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 we were actually, my husband and I were down in Mexico and we rented a, a Jeep at the airport and my hair in the 
you know, one and a half hour drive or however long the drive was to where we were staying, my hair got so incredibly tangled and matted that I, I think I stood in the shower for an, over an hour, went through a whole bottle of conditioner and a comb and I, I could not untangle it. And I, at that point I was like, okay, it's time to cut it. It's, it's, too, it's too far gone. <laughs> Advice I would give to a young girl um, hoping to model would be to um, just stay true to yourself and um, you know try to um, try to you know keep your other interests going and um, and 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 yeah just. Be yourself. You know, the most important thing is to, to be yourself and, 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 and not lose yourself in, in this business.